continuing with our Break It Down theme of Jubilee, we have Dan Dupee here to talk about the Coalition for Christian Outreach and their Jubilee Conference that starts this weekend. Let's check it out. You know, this Jubilee concept yeah. has got me interested in yeah. how it started and what was, when was the very first Jubilee? Yeah, the first Jubilee was uh, 1977. Um, the, the CCO started in 1971 because in, in this part of, in western Pennsylvania, we could see that young people were dropping by the wayside during the college years. People felt like college campuses were a spiritual wasteland. And a, a few years later, they uh, developed this conference, you know, to help students understand what the Lordship of Christ would mean for every part of their lives. And that's something that um, is really critical. We were talking a little bit about how all, all of us, and, and students too, we compartmentalize our faith, and our faith cannot integrate with our schooling. It cannot integrate with our work. And, and so is that a mission that you all have? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's at the core of what the CCO is. It's at the core of what Jubilee is. Mm. Well, it seems like the 70s were a real time of change. Mm -hmm. I remember the 70s. I went mean, crusade, yeah. campus, a campus crusade, uh, oh, yeah. young, young life, yeah. Yeah. high school, yeah. high school. Yeah. and the navigators. Right, uh -huh. right, mm -hmm. right. What other? There, there were others. There were a bunch of groups that started. Sure, right. InterVarsity right. was, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a vital part of the college mm -hmm. ministry. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. you know, that was rough times. Students went off and kind of did their own thing in the 70s. Now it's the same deal, it feels like. I don't know if it's as, as, as much flesh-oriented as mm -hmm. it was in the 70s. You know, the 70s was very kind of drugs and alcohol and, yeah. and uh, promiscuity. That was, what was what that time period is. This period today doesn't feel that way to me. Yeah. Uh, but you're in the college campus. Just, what's it like on campus now? And it's a great question. I think the, the college campuses are places, the, the college experience is still fundamentally the same as what you just described from the 70s. So it's a time where students are finding themselves, their identity is getting formed. Mm -hmm. one, the way one person is, it's, it's sort of like the cement is wet. But it's but it's starting to starting to harden. Right. Um, so now I think the students are going into college in an environment that's where there's a lot of different ideas, mm -hmm. a lot of different beliefs. It's very diverse relative to the other students that that you're going to school with, mm -hmm. and also relative to the the content of the classroom. Right. That's right. Yeah. There's right. you can you can encounter all kinds of stuff as a young person on a college campus, especially if you go to a secular school. Uh, uh, not a Christian school, mm -hmm. the, the professors are different now mm -hmm. than they were in the 70s. I went to college in the 70s, not that they were, and I didn't go to a Christian school, yeah. not that they were Christian guys, but they weren't, they weren't necessarily anti-Christian either. Yeah. You know, now there's a lot more of the hostility yeah. on campus towards the Christian faith. Well, it's interesting, you, you know, you bring that up. I've spent the last couple of years uh, researching and writing a book for parents to help them get their sons and daughters ready for the, for the college experience. Very good. Yeah, and it's, it, I learned a lot. One of the things that I learned was the, this phenomenon of uh, professors who are hostile to the faith which seemed to me, because I went to school probably when you did, there were certainly circumstances where that happened, but a lot of it was sort of an urban legend. Yeah. Uh, well, what I encountered in focus groups that I did with parents was actual accounts from their kids of professors who kind of went after them in the classroom. Wow. And it changed my perspective on it. It's exactly what you described as different now than it was then. I think it feels more hostile. Yeah. More hostile to faith. And interesting enough, a lot of religions, Islam as, as one, are funding chairs in the universities. Yeah. So they're getting uh, Islam professors, Muslim professors, funded as teaching chairs yeah. in universities so they have a platform. Interesting strategy. Yeah, yeah. Well, and on, a, on another way, I may not be connecting the dots here, but I'm thinking for kids that are 18 and they're starting school, that this is so important for them to be involved in CCO mm -hmm. and Jubilee, 
because some of them have never identified what they believe in yeah. on their own. Yeah. They just have sort of inherited their parents' faith and their belief, mm -hmm. and they've never had to have that encounter with the professor or with other students to say, why do you believe what you believe? And, mm -hmm. and there's certain foundations, and it's a discipleship that they have to own on their own. So that's, this is a really great opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, well, and that is part of, I think, what the project is during the college years for a young person. You know, I, I asked, uh, I did a survey as I was uh, starting on this book project, and I had uh, about 300 people respond to an online survey. And the question was, you know, what, what, what would you define as a successful transition to a real adult faith? Um, and the first thing that people mention over and over and over again was that a young person owns the faith for themselves, mm -hmm. that it's, it's not their parents anymore, it's theirs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's a big part of what happens during, or can happen during the college years. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's exciting to me is that God loves our kids yeah. mm -hmm. and that he has, he has built a path for them mm -hmm. to follow. Mm -hmm. And as organiza organizations like yours mm -hmm. goes out and our influences, I pray for our sons, our son and our daughter, we have two in college mm -hmm. now, every day or that God would lead across their path Absolutely. young men and women, older men and women that are influencers, yeah. that are catalysts, and mm -hmm. that they could relate to and connect with, mm -hmm. and that that could be a way that the Lord would bring them into the right path. Because mm -hmm. every day is a choice oh, yeah. how right. you're going to walk mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's a gr I mean, it, it's so interesting you bring that up because there, there's a few years ago, a researcher at Notre Dame looked at common characteristics that kids who do successfully transition, what was true about them when they were 18 before they went to college. And one of their six things that were true that they found consistently, and one of them was exactly what you brought up, and that is the influence of other caring adults in the life of a young person. So one of our staff people could be that caring adult. Absolutely. But the person next to him in the pew could be that person wow. too. Yeah, now, is there CCOs, is it just Northeast or is it national? You know, we have our kids go to school in Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah. Are they there? Where is it all I wish located? We were there. <laughs> we're, we're, uh, the focus is in this. We're at 115 schools, all within about a day's drive of okay. Pittsburgh. So we go as far west as Indiana, as far east as New York City. Oh, wow. And just about all the spaces in between. <laughs> There's a lot of schools that's in this area. Yeah, there are a ton of schools. Christian right. and not. Do you have, are you, do you have uh, campus fellowship on the Christian campuses too? We do on a handful of Christian campuses. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of students at Christian schools that are there, maybe because their parents want them there, Absolutely. and they're not thrilled about it. There's an actually a strong evangelistic opportunity on Christian there campuses. I bet there are. There are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that's one of the things that we zero in on. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm excited about the promise in the Word that says, if you raise up a child in the way that they should go, when they're old, they shall not depart from it. So that's I hold nice. on to that promise. Mm -hmm. And I think our, our viewers need to hold on to that promise yes. that you plant good seeds, it's going to have a good harvest. Amen. And maybe CCO can be part of that harvest. A absolutely. That's what we're there to do. I mean, mm -hmm. our our role is to come alongside of the work that parents and churches have done. Mm -hmm. And uh, as it, it's just as you've said, the, the, uh, you can't give up on a kid. No and mm -hmm. the college is a perfect time to have some exciting things happen in the life of a young person. Well, we, and we want to pray for this upcoming, upcoming jubilee. Thank you. Pray for God's anointing and to draw the right people to, this, to, the, to the event. Yeah. We're going to put our, your link on our website on www.ctvn.org so that if you want some more information, you can come find out more about it. And I encourage you, if, if your son or daughter, grandson and granddaughter needs to have some encouragement to go and get their faith pumped up, mm -hmm. this is a good place for them to do it. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks again you. for having me, Tom. Appreciate it. Thank you.